so like Ruth said, I'm Anne. I'm the CEO of Silicon Republic. Um, for those of you who don't know us, we're sort of we're Ireland's tech science innovation website. Um, we report news every five minutes, basically, during the day um, on anything to do with innovation and technology. We've been doing it for a hell of a long time. Um, this is my co-founder, Darren. Um, we're both big believers in diversity. Um, that will give you an idea that, that the fact that we started the company both together. It was a huge help to me because I would have been incredibly uh, introverted and shy. So to, to actually start a company with a partner who was less so was fantastic. So I highly recommend working in teams or with, um, with a fellow, uh, I suppose, aficionado. Um, this is some of our team. You probably met some of them today. They're wearing the Change the Ratio uh, T-shirts. Uh, and I'll explain to you a little bit about where that comes from. But I'm really proud of the fact that Silicon Republic is basically 50-50 gender mix. Um, that happened by accident. You might say it's not by accident um, because I'd like to think that we recruited with a very open mind um, and the result has been brilliant. And we end up with great innovation coming out of the company because of that diversity of team. Um, now, I was talking about diversity, but <laughs> I just wanted to ask you to think about the future, particularly I'm talking to the young women and the hundred young women who came here today. Um, it's really very important that you be part of shaping it. And I just wanted to give you a few examples from history. Um, some of you will be aware of things like the series Mad Men. Um, but in those days, the ad industry was very, very heavily dominated by men. You're talking 99%. And the result was advertising like this. Um, the chef does everything but cook, that's what wives are for. And ads like this, you mean a woman can open it? <laughs> um, the really scary thing is the um, ad industry is still heavily dominated by men. And in 2014, uh, I hope there's nobody from Samsung here, but if you are, I'm very sorry. Uh, this was an ad for a Samsung that allowed you really, really easily get your photos onto Facebook. Uh, therefore, easy enough for a ditzy girl, basically, um, was the idea. So that's a bit worrying. Um, then you look at the areas of engineering, and particularly, for example, car manufacturing. Uh, this is Sierra Sam. Anybody heard of him? No, he was the first, first uh, crash test dummy designed back in 1949 for the car industry. And I don't know whether any of you are aware of this, but... Because again, being very male-dominated and not being thought of from a woman's perspective, that industry, it was 2011 before they brought in a female-shaped crash test dummy. Okay, so cars were not tested for crashes with women driving. And we have a different anatomy, so it hits you in different places, etc. So the danger is that in the industries that remain dominated by men, you end up with products designed for men only, and you end up with products that are very homogenous. So I want you all to think about that because it's very important for the future. Now, th some people say the reason for that is uh, girls suck at math, okay? I mean, this could not be further from the truth. Most of you, I hope, will have heard of Ada Lovelace. I, I see somebody clapping in the front, that's always a good sign. Um, she was basically, she was born in 1815 and she was basically the first computer scientist. She worked with Charles Babbage and until recent years, really, you used to always hear talking about Charles Babbage and you didn't hear about Ada. Luckily, Ada Lovelace is becoming much more famous and prominent now. Um, but that's back in 1815. It wasn't easy to do that in those days as a woman, as you can imagine. Um, closer to home here is um, Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Uh, she was passed over for the Nobel Prize. It went to her supervisor, but it's highly recognized now that in fact it was her discovery of the pulsars that won the Nobel Prize. She was made a dame. She's from Northern Ireland. Uh, this is the chief technology officer of the United States of America. Okay, Megan Smith, an absolutely incredible technologist. This is Dr. Sue Black. Uh, she uh, very unhappily became separated from her husband in her 20s, found herself suddenly a single mom of two, went back to college, and she's now uh, has a doctorate in computer science and is widely recognized and turns up on all the Guardian top 10 lists of women in tech in the UK. Uh, she's the founder of Tech Moms. This is Margaret Burgraff. She's from Cork. She was working in Apple in Cork and was headhunted over to Silicon Valley um, because she's just an incredible software designer. Um, and she now is one of the most senior women in Intel in the world from Cork. Um, 
This uh, is Susan McKenna. She's an astrophysicist. She's in her 70s. Um, she has a company, she's Irish, sorry. She has a company called Our Space Technology and her technology is on the space station. I hope you've heard of her, but I bet you haven't. Anybody heard of her? Did I see one hand? None? Oh, thank you, Ellen. <laughs> I'm glad one man has heard of her, that's good. Susan McKenna Lawler, you should hear about her. She's actually speaking at our event in June, I'll tell you about it now. I'm sure you're more familiar with these three girls. They were the young scientists, Kira, Emer, and Sophie, and then they went on to win the International Google Science Fair for their, um, pro they're all from Cork as well, funnily enough. There's something in the water in Cork, I think. Um, and they, uh, it was for their project around food scarcity, basically, and the, the, the science behind that, a fantastic project. Lauren, are you here? Where are you? Hi, Lauren. <laughs> How are you? Um, for those of you who haven't met Lauren today or who don't know her, Lauren is 10. Are you still 10, Lauren? Yeah. And became the EU Digital Girl of the Year last year, which I think is pretty amazing at 10. <laughs> Share my eye there, that was lovely. <laughs> um, this is Ariel Waldman, and I suppose this is just to demonstrate that, you know, to get into the amazing careers in science and technology, and you don't actually even have to be a technologist or a scientist. You don't necessarily have to go to college and do computer science. It would be a great thing to do, but it's not the only thing you can do. Uh, Ariel is incredible, highly regarded. She's the founder of spacehack.org out in Silicon Valley, and she has a background in advertising and marketing and just became passionate about science. Um, so, you know, you can change your mind. Uh, this is Sonia Lennon. I'm not sure if you know her and her partner in crime, uh, Brendan. Uh, again, anybody familiar with Sonia? Anybody into fashion? Yeah, there's a couple of people familiar with her. She's a big fashionista in Ireland and was on Off the Rails and RT and all the rest of it. She has set up her own web-based company called Frock Advisor, which has received a lot of funding and support. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be a huge success for them. But again, she doesn't have a background in science or technology. She's gone towards the digital and the web. Um, so the possibilities are massive. So don't, don't be fooled into thinking the scientists wear white coats or the technologists, they're always in labs. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about what, what we do, we at Silicon probably got very frustrated with the fact that everywhere we looked, every event we went to, we were surrounded by white middle class male uh, speakers and um, people who were putting themselves forward for interview and everything. So we made a very, we launched a couple of years ago a campaign called Women Invent where we made a very conscious effort to profile, not token women, let me emphasize, but to profile the remarkable women that we come across because we're out in the industry every day. Um, and it's been a huge success. It's had over 300,000 page views just on the Women Invent content itself on the site. And we've, um, and hundreds of thousands of social shares. So it is very important that and I know that one or two of them here who I have tried to encourage to be interviewed and who are reluctant, when you are in any way successful, please stand up and be counted because if the people who come behind you don't see you, they will think that only men run the tech industry and it's not true. Uh, we published 100 Top Women in STEM and we're publishing another 100 Top Women in STEM um, at the end of April. They are out there, we had a doddle finding 100. That's why we have to publish another 100. Please use it as a reference if you're ever looking for people to come and talk to you or you know at your school or your college or if you are looking for people to speak at your events. Uh, we also ran the Female Founders Forum. Again, it was oversubscribed and we were spoiled for choice for remarkable female entrepreneurs in tech. Uh, this is the 100 top women in STEM. We got most of them in a room one night, which was a fantastic achievement. Some of them coming as far from as far as Silicon Valley and from Paris, et cetera. Um, in June, I, I told you about how frustrated we were with looking at people, um, you know, these big tech um, industry events, whether they be in Paris or Dublin or New York or San Francisco, where there were sort of 90% men on stage. So we decided to reverse it entirely. And we've designed an event called Inspire 2015, which will happen in June. I'm not going to go into massive detail on it now because you all want to know who got the prizes. Um, but it's happening in June and around it, there'll be a fringe festival as well. It's happening, the, the main event is the Board Gosh Energy Theatre and then we'll have a fringe festival with a bit of fun as well. Um, but my call to action today is if you're over 18 now, or if you're over 18 in June and into STEM and into equality and into diversity, 
Um, please apply to be a volunteer. I think the volunteer forms, Ashley will tell me, I think it's the end of the week they go up um, this week. Uh, so do please consider volunteering because obviously you get a free ticket if you volunteer and we're trying to design the volunteering in such a way that you still get to see the speakers you want and then work part of the time. Um, make sure your name is in the draw, it's probably too late is it, but hopefully all your names are in the draw for the various tickets today that we're giving away. And um, above all just to let you know on the Saturday the 20th I'm really thrilled to to say that it looks like we will have a Girls Ireland hackathon on the Saturday morning as part of the Fringe. We, we were very keen to have a free event for under 18s and parents on the Saturday. Um, so please come along, you just need to register in advance, but we'll have coding workshops for adults, we'll have coding workshops um, from Coder Dojo. I see a Coder Dojo t-shirt up there. And we'll have, um, as I say, a Girls Ireland hackathon around hardware, I hope all to be designed. We've only started talking about it in the last few days, but I hope some of you will come and join us. It, that is absolutely free entry. And then otherwise watch out for, there'll be great special offers for students and under 18s and things like that. So I'm not going to delay you any longer. Um, I just, want to, just would really like to say, the point I was making at the beginning is when I'm old and gray, I mean, I really would like to think that, you know, the software I'm using, the websites I'm on, the med tech that is helping me um, age gracefully and comfortably. I really do hope that a lot of it is going to be designed by some of the women here in the room. It would be a shame if we had a room, a, a, a world designed by men only, much and all as we love them. Thank you.